What if Kit Fisto refused to go fight Sidious with the Jedi and without Anakin Skywalker? That's our story today. Let's get right into it. The Jedi Masters loaded onto the shuttle, preparing to take off and face Darth Sidious, now revealed to be Chancellor Palpatine. Clouds were swept in with the twilight, and now a thin, drizzling rain was beginning to fall. The Masters were loading up. They were getting ready as the temple was set up to be defended. It's time to go, said Mace Windu. And what about Skywalker? Kit Fisto said. What of the Chosen One? I've sent them to the council chamber until our return, Mace Windu said, and he looked at the Jedi. And he said, we will do our duty, and he shall do his. And as they were taking off, Fisto looked to the other Jedi, Sazie Tin and Aegon Kolar, as they shared an understanding look of concern. This was Darth Sidious, the Sith Lord. He revealed himself to Anakin on purpose. He'd spent years, no, decades planning out his every move for this exact moment. And Fisto realized they would be foolish to not bring the Jedi who killed Count Dooku. So Fisto turned to the pilot and told him to wait right here before he could take off. Windu looked at Fisto with a mix of surprise and curiosity before Fisto said that they were making a mistake. He told Windu that they needed Skywalker. He was the supposed chosen one, and years of planning were all coming together in this moment for Sidious. He said that, for better or for worse, they have to bring Anakin. It is his destiny to be in the office, as the war ends one way or another. Windu hesitated, looking to the other two Jedi, and he realized he was alone in his thinking that Anakin must stay behind. Fisto said he would not go without Anakin, he couldn't, and Windu sighed, then told Fisto to go get the boy. Kit Fisto thanked Master Windu, jumping off the ship, running to Anakin Skywalker. And all alone in the council chambers, Anakin was wrestling with himself, wrestling with his darkness, and he was losing. He was pacing around in the council, sitting, standing, looking out the window, then down to the floor, trying to calm himself in any way he could, but it wasn't working. All he could think was, what have I done? Remembering what Palpatine said, that when he dies, his knowledge to save Padme dies with him. And Anakin remembered that Palpatine trusted him. The Jedi did not trust him. The Jedi left him here while everything ends. He knew what he had to do. He must go to Palpatine's office. But as he turned, Anakin saw Kit Fisto now standing at the door. Fisto greeted Anakin, and the Jedi Master could feel the conflict in Anakin. He could tell that, one way or another, Anakin would have made his way to Palpatine's office. So it was only right that he come with the Jedi, learn that the Jedi do trust him. Fisto told Anakin that they want him to come with, bring an end to the Sith. Anakin was actually stunned to hear this, but he fought through his conflict to say that he will come with. Together, as Jedi, they will arrest Palpatine, and Anakin will learn the truth. Mace Windu watched as Fisto and Anakin arrived together, and as they boarded, the shuttle began to take off. The feeling inside of the shuttle was extremely tense, and Windu simply gave Anakin a nod, trying to express some trust, and Anakin nodded back. The five Jedi held on as the ship flew over Coruscant, and as they approached, Windu finally spoke. He said the Chancellor, Darth Sidious, is confident, hopefully too confident, where it becomes his weakness. He looked around, saying they have five council members here today, and together they will bring down the Sith, once and for all. Anakin noted that Windu didn't say arrest, so he asked if the Jedi were here to arrest Palpatine or kill him, and Windu gave everyone a stern look, saying that would be up to Palpatine. And Darth Sidious sat in his chair, looking into the distance, feeling into the Force. He could often feel the future, but today things felt off. Moments ago, he could see the death of the Jedi, he could see himself with Anakin, but now something changed and Sidious was realizing why the Force felt different as the four Jedi he expected walked in. But alongside them was Anakin. This was unexpected. Anakin was not supposed to be here. Sidious knew that fighting all five Jedi would be tough. Anakin would be determined to arrest him. So the plan was simple enough. Fight long enough to make the Jedi want to kill him, and then force Anakin to make a choice. So Palpatine greeted them all, making subtle eye contact with Anakin, before Mace Windu said that he was under arrest. Sidious knew it was time to fight, so he and the Jedi ignited their lightsabers together, but he could not take them down all five at once. So Sidious felt into the Force, where his statues stood, 
feeling his second lightsaber, and with a quick flick of the force, he pulled the second one through the heart of Aegon Kolar and into his own hand. The Jedi watched in shock as Kolar fell dead, and suddenly, Sidious spun through the air like a shadow of death. Upon landing, Sidious spun and cut Saezy Tin in half, and immediately the fight was three versus one. He snarled, lunging forward at Windu. In Anakin's mind, this was something that was almost impossible to believe. The calm, gentle, reassuring man that was like his father just killed two Jedi without hesitation. And now he was moving to kill them. Anakin now realized the cold, hard truth. Sidious was a Sith, Palpatine was the Sith, and from everything he'd ever been taught, the Sith showed no mercy, they cared only about themselves, and Anakin remembered how Sidious treated Dooku, killing him off when the time was right, and Anakin knew now that perhaps too Sidious was too dangerous to be left alive. Could he truly save Padme? Would he truly save Padme? Did he care about Anakin or Padme at all? Anakin didn't know what to think but he just killed two Jedi without mercy. For years, Sidious had taken everything into account, manipulated Anakin perfectly, but today, he made his first devastating mistake. He showed Anakin who he truly is. If Anakin would have waited and shown up late, then he would have seen an old friend just being beaten down by the Jedi. He could have shown Anakin that the Jedi were trying to take over, but today, he showed Anakin that he was a merciless killer that would do anything to rule by himself. And in doing so, he underestimated what good was still in Anakin's heart. And so the battle continued with a sudden burst of movement as Sidious lunged forward with astonishing speed. Anakin, Kitfisto, and Mace Windu were ready, their lightsabers meeting the red blade of the Sith Lord. The office was a battleground with antique furniture and artifacts flying around the room, serving as obstacles as they moved through them. Anakin's style was marked by raw power, each strike fueled by his conflict, but it was becoming more resolute. Kit Fisto's fluid movements displayed a mastery of Form 1 lightsaber combat, which was effective against the dual-bladed Sidious, while Mace Windu's Vapod technique channeled the dark side to fuel this fight. Sidious, however, was the most powerful Sith Lord in a long, long time, and he would not fall easily. The confined space of the office added a sense of urgency to the clash. Lightsabers moved with unbelievable speed, sparks flew through the room, the Jedi pressed their advantage against the Sith Lord, and as the battle intensified, Sidious unleashed bursts of Sith lightning, forcing the Jedi to defend against the onslaught. The lightsaber blades crackled with their energy as they intercepted the dark lightning, creating a display of light and shadow across the room. Anakin absorbed the lightning with his blade, using the force to fire it back at Sidious. The Sith Lord flipped away, stopped an offensive push from Windu and Skywalker with a force push of his own. The two Jedi tumbled away, and Sidious smiled, taking Fisto on all alone. Kit Fisto had fought General Grievous, and could have likely defeated him on his lair early on in the war, if not for his guards. Even so, Sidious was levels above Grievous, and the Sith Lord moved in with his two lightsabers, swinging at astonishing speed. Fisto deflected, fighting back, but soon enough, his lightsaber was tossed away. Sidious laughed, spinning to cut the Jedi in half, but right as he was about to cut the Jedi, his strike was intercepted. Sidious looked up now to see Anakin, determination in his eyes, as he defended Fisto, and Anakin used this surprise to toss one lightsaber away from Sidious, pushing him back towards the window. And now, in a final, coordinated effort, Anakin, Kit Fisto, and Mace Windu closed in on Sidious. The Sith Lord fought with a desperate ferocity, realizing that his hold on power was slipping. The clash reached its end, as Anakin finally cut through the Sith Lord's hand, and he fell to the ground. Windu had his purple lightsaber to his chin, and Sidious looked up at Anakin. He was forcing him to make a choice. He yelled at Anakin that the Jedi never intended on arresting him. He yelled that the Jedi crave power over the Republic. But Anakin recalled the horrific acts of Sidious, the entire war set up by him the trust of the Jedi that Kit Fisto had showed him. And now, Kit Fisto grabbed Anakin's shoulder, guiding him away as they walked away from the Sith Lord. Sidious was in complete shock, and he realized his loss as Windu raised his saber, striking him down once and for all. Moments later, Mace Windu came up behind Anakin and Fisto as they were looking at the bodies of Kolar and Tin, two more Jedi Masters massacred by this war. 
but there would be no more. They grabbed the bodies, silently walking past guards, clones, senators that were gathered outside the room. They were all in shock, and Windu said everything would be explained shortly as they got back into the shuttle, heading for the Jedi Temple. And over the next 24 hours or so, Jedi across the galaxy would finish their battles, returning to the temple while Mace Windu, Kit Fisto, and Anakin Skywalker explained everything to the Senate. Luckily, Palpatine was recording the entire exchange, and he died before he could manipulate it. So the full recording was shown to explain who Palpatine truly was, the Dark Lord of the Sith, controlling the war. The Senate was in disarray, and they were deciding on their next moves, as the Jedi Council was fully gathered in session, some time later. In the center of the council stood Anakin Skywalker. With the death of the Sith, Anakin was now being promoted to the rank of Jedi Master, something he'd always wanted. During the ceremony, Obi-Wan was extremely happy, and Yoda was proud as Anakin was officially promoted. Everyone in the council could feel that Anakin was very happy to receive this promotion, but still he carried a deep sadness within himself. Everyone in the council assumed this was because he was close with Palpatine, and the betrayal was hurting him. But Obi-Wan knew it was something more. For Anakin, he knew what it was. Padme, the nightmares. Padme was going to die in childbirth, and the one person that had ever promised Anakin answers was dead. The only answer Anakin knew of right now was the dark side, and without Palpatine, without Sidious, he didn't know how to do it. Could he go by himself? Could he turn by himself? Anakin was afraid of the nightmares, afraid of himself. He needed help, but didn't know how to ask. And after Anakin was made a master, the Council was informed that the Republic spies have found the Separatist leaders on Mustafar. And so after some discussion, it was decided that Kit Fisto would actually lead the final charge on the Separatists and arrest them. Everyone agreed, but Obi-Wan spoke up, asking if Anakin could go with Fisto as well. He said Anakin went on a mission to Mustafar during the war, so he could be most familiar with it. Anakin said he would do it, and the Council agreed the mission would be led by Masters Fisto and Skywalker. After the meeting, Obi-Wan got to Fisto alone and explained why he wanted Anakin to go with him. Obi-Wan said that Anakin still had some emotions to talk through, and Fisto now has Anakin's trust. Obi-Wan simply asked Fisto to talk with Anakin. Fisto smiled, saying he would try to help the boy with whatever he needs. And eventually, the two masters boarded a Republic Star Destroyer with the 501st Army under their command. Before they took off, Ahsoka Tano had returned to the temple, with Captain Rex and Maul placed in the temple prison. Anakin and Ahsoka had talked for a bit, and Ahsoka said she was considering rejoining the Order with the war coming to an end soon. In hyperspace, Anakin was alone in the training room now, trying to focus his anxiety, his anger into becoming a better fighter, putting all of his emotions into the training, something he'd done his entire life. His strikes were perfectly calculated, he was an elite fighter, but his anxiety about Padme dying, it only continued to grow. He could feel the darkness still tugging at him. And so, as Kit Fisto opened the door, Anakin became distracted, cutting all the way through the training droid. Kit Fisto greeted him, and he ignited his own lightsaber on the training setting. This caught Anakin off guard. He'd never sparred with Fisto before, but seeing him in battle versus Sidious, hearing how he fought Grievous, Anakin knew he was a good fighter. And Anakin did enjoy a good spar. It was fun. It helped put his mind on something else. So he cocked his head and got ready. Fisto readied himself as well, and he knew Jedi like Anakin. He was hard to get through, but perhaps this approach would serve him well. During the spar, Fisto planned to find out exactly what was stressing Anakin out. Anakin moved forward, the rhythmic clash of lightsabers echoed against the walls, and the two skilled Jedi exchanged strikes and parries. Anakin, normally an adept and focused duelist, appeared very distracted, his movements betraying an inner turmoil. Kit Fisto noticed this, the signs of Anakin's distraction, and during a momentary break in their clash, Fisto took the opportunity to speak, saying, Anakin, something troubles you. Your focus is not as sharp as usual. What is weighing on your mind, my friend? But Anakin moved forward, not saying a word, trying to defeat Fisto now to prove nothing was wrong. The two dueled again. Anakin was off balance, being eaten alive from stress, while Fisto moved with grace. And after a moment, he had Anakin defeated. Fisto spoke again, saying, You will not defeat me until you are able to defeat yourself, Anakin. And Anakin hesitated, lowering his lightsaber. 
He met Kit Fisto's gaze, and a mix of turmoil and vulnerability was laying in his eyes, and he said, It's... it's Padme. Anakin had finally admitted it, his voice tinged with a rare vulnerability. I've been having nightmares about her, about losing her, and Palpatine said only he could save her. Anakin finally revealed it, and Kit Fisto's expression softened, understanding the gravity of Anakin's fears, why the Sith revealed himself to Anakin after all. The Jedi Council always had suspicions of a relationship of some sort with Anakin and Padme, and it appeared the Sith was using this to bring Anakin to his side. So, he deactivated his lightsaber, placing a hand on Anakin's shoulder, and said, Nightmares can be haunting, Anakin. It's essential to share your burdens. Let the Force guide you through this darkness. And Fisto invited Anakin to sit with him in meditation. Once they were seated, Fisto told Anakin to reach into the Force. Try to find the nightmares. Anakin hated this idea. He hated seeing the nightmares, but he trusted Fisto. He dove deep into his mind, trying to find the nightmare. But he couldn't. Anakin realized suddenly, the nightmares were gone. They were only a faint memory, and he opened his eyes to see Kit Fisto smiling. He didn't even have to speak, as Fisto said, It is as I suspected, Anakin. The Sith Lord gave you those nightmares, and as he died, so did they. Anakin felt a calmness wash over him. The stress washed away. Palpatine gave him those nightmares. Padme was safe, and Anakin felt like the joyful, happy version of himself that he thought died long ago. Anakin stood up, igniting his training saber with Fisto, and in a few short strikes, Anakin defeated the Jedi Master. He reached out a hand, lifting Fisto up, and Fisto smiled, telling Anakin that this is the danger of attachments. They can be used against the Jedi. But Fisto said that he, along with many others, have mastered the ability to not let attachments destroy them, and when the war is over, he will teach Anakin to live without the fear of losing those that you love. In time, the Star Destroyer would emerge above Mustafar, and the two Jedi would lead squads of clones to the surface. The search was quick and simple, and the leaders did not put up any fight. They were arrested with ease. The war was over, as they were taken back to Coruscant. And over the coming weeks, Padme would safely birth twins, with very little concern from Anakin. The Council was made aware of this relationship, and they considered expelling Anakin. But with peace in the galaxy, the Council instead would guide Anakin through the reality that not everyone can be saved forever. Bail Organa would become the new Chancellor of the Republic as they transitioned into a new era of peace. On the Council, Anakin decided to step down from it in order to bear less responsibility and spend more time with his family and become the father they needed. Kit Fisto became a great friend and mentor to both Anakin and Obi-Wan as they all moved past the war into a new time of peace. And folks, that's our story for today. Hope you guys enjoyed, let's talk about it for a bit. So in the Revenge of the Sith novel, right before the Jedi Masters officially take off to go fight Palpatine, all three of them kind of talk about, you know, reservations, hesitations, about maybe wanting Yoda, Obi-Wan, wondering why the Chosen One isn't coming, and Windu and I think Kolar just kind of assured them that they'll be enough. But there is reservations, they want, you know, some help. Wondering why the Chosen One, what's he up to? So I wanted to interpret that and just kind of take that and have Fisto be like, no, nah, we're going to bring Anakin. I don't know why Fisto, I just really, really like Kid Fisto. Since I was a little kid, he's always been one of my favorite Jedi to talk about or just watch, read about, whatever. So that's what I did today. I don't think I've done a story with him in the title. Maybe I have, I don't, you know, whatever, but <laughs> I really wanted to just have him kind of be a focal point today. Let me know what you guys thought. I saw a comment the other day that was really nice, just kind of said, I like how this channel focuses on these smaller characters sometimes, so appreciate that, big fan of Kid Fisto. And why Anakin fought Sidious and didn't help him like he did in the movie, I tried to kind of address that in the story, but in the movie, Anakin runs in on Palpatine, he didn't see any of the fight, sure he saw the bodies, but he didn't actually see Sidious fighting, and he just kind of sees him being helpless as Mace Windu's trying to kill him, so Anakin's like, Oh, the Jedi are trying to take over, but actually being in that room, seeing what Sidious is capable of, makes him want to fight, in my opinion. So let me know what you thought of that. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video.